sometimes it's very hard as a woman roaming around the street freely because we are scared. We are scared. There's a fear outside. Being black and gay in the community which doesn't respect or support you and it ended up being raped by some guys. I was not fully used of alcohol, but that night I drank. Nah, maybe he's playing. He's my grandfather. He's not gonna do anything to me, you know? I should have maybe run or fight with them, but I never fight, and I was powerless. I don't even have evidence. I don't know what to tell the police, because I know nothing. I remember nothing. What did we do? Like, what happened? Don't tell anyone. Because I'm so scared, you know, they're going to laugh at me. I once had a trauma of being raped. It happened with my teammates. Okay. Sexual violence, it's when someone touch you that you don't like. It's where you're forced to have sex with someone without his or her permission. When you are doing something that your partner is not okay with. Sexual violence is like an invasion, the slaughtering of a person's soul. We'd all studied at home when my father would beat up my mother. That changed me a lot. And that was the start of everything. I was once like touched by someone and also, I was called in names, like not names. The people who perpetrated me, they treat themselves as the straight people, and then they're the one who tried me to be involved with some girls. Then when I didn't do that, and then it's the one who raped me. They took over me because there were three guys, and then I was just one person. So this guy came alone. He's also my teammate came alone and undressed me. But I was in denial. I didn't want to, I didn't want to tell him that I was raped. Most of my teammates were on his side. Like, I wanted him to do that. So I was in my senior primary school. They would come, they started touching my shoulders and stuff. And I'm like, no, don't do that, you know, because I didn't like it. I did not like that. Now he's on my thighs. Now it's my, it was my shoulders and my boobs. Now it's good, my thighs now. My cousin is part of it, which is, that's what breaks my heart, you know. And from that time, it happened at, at home again. My grandmother's sister, boyfriend, was staying with us. It was a very old man. And one day I was alone and it happened. And then my mother decided to uh, take us full time right now. It was 2011 and she had a boyfriend as well. So it happened again. I used to tell myself that I'm, I'm strong. I'm capable of anything. I'm useful. I'm worthful. But after I lost respect of myself, I eventually lost myself. Yeah. I was a happy child, talkative, comfortable and I trust very easily. That was before. I was always bubbly. I loved to 
to joke a lot and to just have fun, you know, and I had a lot of friends. All of that changed, you know, and I started to hate myself. I lose trust. I hated people. And right now I'm living a life which I'm scared of being around guys. Although I love them, I don't want to be around them anymore. And that time after experiencing my trauma, I didn't believe in love. And I didn't love. I blocked myself from loving anyone else. I didn't even love myself. I only told myself, now I'm not gonna be loved enough if they know my story. I stayed maybe, I think for up to six years with no relationship because I was hurting and I was alone and I was not feeling comfortable to be with someone else. I stopped loving at all. I just hated everyone who was approaching me. At first I blamed myself for what happened to me. If I was not there at that time, maybe I should have been safe. But I was out and then that's when it happened. Because I knew right there I was wrong by drinking alcohol and being out at night. I don't know if it had to do the way I dressed or maybe my thighs are showing on on what, what is happening to me, am I cursed? And I never get any help. I never went to the doctor. I never went any because I was hiding it. I was ashamed. When you get to the, some clinics, when you talk things about that and being a guy saying you're raped, people start laughing at you as if like you're saying something which is not real. I was so scared to tell my grandmother. Maybe I'll be lying or, you know? And it happened and I kept quiet until today. It's not because they have to be silent because they want to be silent. They don't talk about it because there's this thing as Emma Kayoguti you know, if it happens, like, let's, let's keep quiet. Let's not talk about it. If I had someone who will understand me, I was not going to be silent about it. But being silent about it, it hurt even more. All the time I needed my mother. I needed my mother's support. I needed my mother's love. I needed my mother to be in the picture. People need family support, but it's very difficult when it comes to abuse, the family. Sexual abuse do happen a lot within families, and then you end up keeping that a secret. And then they end up saying, you're the one who started it. So if you don't have support and then you don't talk about it, then you end up being the one to be blamed, although you were perpetrated. Consent means you are agreeing to do what the person asks you to do. Consent is being sober enough to say yes. Consent is permission. Consent means no means no. And then yes means yes. You have a consent, you have a permission to do that. I want people to know being sexually violated or harassed it changes the way you think, the way you do things, you know. It makes you a person that you don't want to be. We need all of us to fight sexual violence. Not as a woman, as a woman, we need to fight sexual violence, all of us. Sexual violence is like a thing which is happening all over, not just in Cape Town, not just in South Africa. People must just understand that violence is not the key.